Hello everyone, depending on where you are joining us from, uh, good afternoon, good evening and welcome to our first digital talk as part of our IB and Vitra talk series. I'm Aslina Bulma, Director of RIB International. Thank you for joining us for this RIB and uh, Vitra talk with Ali Yuchun, Principal of Atelier Desk House. We are thrilled to be streaming Yuchun direct from Shanghai today for this talk, whilst all of us are based uh, across the world. Some of us at home and others at office, perhaps. We are incredibly excited to be resuming this program of talks which uh, continues to showcase the best of contemporary established and emerging voices in architecture leading architects have been speaking at events taking place in london across the united kingdom and also internationally with events in istanbul in turkey our thanks to Vitra Bathrooms, who are partnering with the RIBA by sponsoring this prestigious series. We're delighted to have you here with us this evening. I am particularly pleased to be introducing Yi Chun and the work uh, of Atelier Desk House tonight as RIBA extends further our work in China. We open our first international offices in Shanghai in December 2019 and since then have launched an exciting program which we've named Hello China. It will see us delivering a suite of activities in the next 12 months and we kick-started this with a successful event in Shanghai on 14th of June at which uh, Yi Chun himself was one, was one of the speakers. We were in Guangzhou last week and there are many more talks to come in addition to online galleries and design competitions. Uh, the RIBA also launched a formal China chapter in May, in which our volunteer members will be working very closely with us uh, to deliver locally based activities in different cities. And early in June, we developed a China dedicated website to ensure we remain accessible to our audience there uh, and beyond. And of course, uh, we have a WeChat ID. For those working in China, uh, you know how important WeChat is for communication. Well, design excellence is really important to our IBA members, no matter where they are in the world. Uh, Yi Chun and his team have shown us how, over the last two decades, the practice has built a reputation for sensitivity, yet strikingly transforming the urban condition in China's fast-growing cities. Key projects like Shanghai Modern Art Museum and the much celebrated Long Museum of the West Bund have transformed historic industrial sites with new life whilst adding much needed urban public spaces. Our Teledesk House was founded in 2001 and I'm looking forward to celebrating 20 years in practice next year. Part of this celebration will include an exhibition at RIBA's headquarters in London between October and November 2021. So if you're based in the UK or London, do keep an eye out for this. I'm going to be handing over to Li Yuchen shortly to start the talk, but before I do so, I just have a couple of housekeeping points. Since we are using Zoom webinar for this event, we cannot see or hear the audience, unfortunately. Should you have any queries, do use the chat function and send something in the Q&A function so we can get, that, get back to you and support you. If you are a social media user, feel free to use the hashtag hashtag RIBA Vitra. Uh, there will also be an opportunity for questions from audience, of course, at the end. So please do bear that in mind. We were using the Q&A function in Zoom uh, to do this. So submit your questions via the Q&A option at the bottom of your window. Um, just note, we will not be actively monitoring the chat box though for questions, but feel free to use that for more informal comments. Well, that's all for me uh, for now. I'm very happy to hand over to Lee Yuchun now for the Reba and uh, Vitra talk. Yuchun, over to you. Uh, good afternoon and uh, good evening here in China. I don't know if there is anyone watching this in the morning. Thank you, Azanina, for introducing this house and me. I'm very glad to be here in Shanghai to share some of our works as a part of the events of the 
London Festival of Architecture. Uh, Shanghai is one of the largest mega cities in China, located where the Yangtze River meets the East Sea. This area named as the Yangtze River Delta Zone has been always rich and populous and nurtures the Jiangnan culture of China. The word Jiangnan means the south of Yangtze River. Within one or two hours drive from Shanghai, Suzhou and Hangzhou are two very typical Jiangnan cities. On architecture, the Jiangnan Gardens, especially Suzhou Garden and its residential buildings are the most representative. Shanghai has been under the impact of both Jiangnan culture and the Western culture. It is in fact more influenced by the West. Architect's house was founded by Zhuang Shen, Chen Yifeng and me in 2001. We all graduated from Shanghai Tongji University and working at Tongji University Institute, Design Institute for about three to four years. Meanwhile, since around 2001, the real estate gradually became the uh, driving force of China's economy development. One of the leading strategies, new town construction. According to some statistics, till 2013, among the 280 Chinese cities, there are 270 with new towns completed or under construction. The built area of cities doubled in just three years time. Shanghai has a famous planning at that time called one city and nine towns. Each new town is given a special building style such as English, German or Dutch architectural style. The practice of office also started with the new town construction of China. Early projects are mostly in the suburb of Shanghai, in Qingpu and Jiading, where it is in the west of Shanghai. The two districts are near the city of Suzhou and had retained the traditional building patterns of the Jiangnan area. So the two new towns avoid turning into Western architectural styles. Since the 2010 Shanghai Expo, many of the sheep factories, industrial wharfs, and warehouses along the Huang River and move out, which gives central Shanghai more space for further restoration. The right map shows our project's locations. Each red dot is one project of us. As you can see, most of our early projects are located in the west suburbs. As Shanghai goes through the transformation from urbanization outward to urban regeneration in downtown area. We are building inwards gradually. I would like to first introduce some of our early projects which are located in areas with a strong influence by the Jiangnan culture. We try to start within the Jiangnan gardens. This is a photo of the Wangshi Garden in Suzhou it is also called Master of Nets Garden, as some of you might have recognized. For us, the density and the spatial pattern of the garden is far more fascinating than its interior residential space. Left is the plan, and right is the diagram of its interior and exterior space. The black area are are the buildings. If, you th if we think about the whole garden as a piece of architecture, we could find that there are two kind of density here. The high density part is in the bottom right, where courtyards are enclosed by building. The low density part is the garden, where buildings are detached from each other. However, their relationships within the landscape make them a unity. The high density and the low density space are juxtaposed within the same boundary. This is an important spatial character of gardens in the southern part of China. When I came into the garden from the residential part through a small door at the corner, vision became open. 
and I feel pleasant there. We designed several projects with such methods. This is Xiaoyu Kindergarten that we designed in 2003. As you could see in the diagram and the model photo, the ground floor is a high density space where courtyards are enclosed by building and walls. And on the second floor, the architectural values are detached from each other. And this reminds us of a small village. Such spatial organization is also reflected on the outside looking. It is an important character of our early works. This is kindergarten of Jardin New Town, designed in 2008. This site sits in the orthogonal urban grids. We designed the building in a compact way, but we still hope to bring the spatial experience of Chinese gardens into the architecture. And this also has something to do with the function of the space as a kindergarten. The building has two parts. One is the circulation space full of slopes, also as an indoor play space. It is an enlarged staircase with the experience similar to climbing a rocky in the Chinese gardens. The slopes connect the classrooms in different heights, which can also be seen on the facade with the staggered playground of each classroom. This is the atriums. This is the atrium surrounded by the slopes. Children can run around inside during the rainy seasons of southern China. At sunset, light shines through the wave-shaped perforated alum aluminum plates covered the southern facade. This is the youth center in Qingpu New Town. The old town of Qingpu follows the small scale dance pattern of traditional Jiangnan towns. But the new town has a completely different urban scale. As you can see in the photo below, the scale of the surrounding area is already much larger than that in the traditional town. It is within this tech context that we try to design a building that has a smaller scale for the exterior space. In this way, a building is also a small city. The left view reminds us the lands in the traditional towns. And the right, you can see a pond with a, strong, a stronger sense of public city compared to the lands. The facade uses the same material as the previous kindergarten project, the wave-shaped perforated aluminum pads. Uh, this is the project that we did in 2009, which is called the Spiral Gallery. It is a small building of 250 square meters and it is inside a forest park. In order to stress the relationship between the architecture and the landscape. We intentionally made the entering experience into the building quite special. People have to go up to the top, circle around, step down into the inner courtyard, and then enter the interior space. As a result, the whole forest became the garden of this small building. This means that the idea of the gardens has turned into a more abstract experience in our architectures. The building with a translucent facade is also the same material as the youth center. This is the top view. This is the inner courtyard. In this architecture, we start to notice the presence of human body in the space. This also prepares a new ground for the upcoming projects in the downtown area. This image shows the location of our projects along the Huangpu Riverside. 
to the west is the central Shanghai, and the east is the Pudong New District. The west side at the river is now called the West Bound. It is a good example of Shanghai urban renewal. With the intervention of art and cultural space to improve the quality of urban space, it is in some ways similar to the South Bank of London, such as transforming industrial buildings into museums and cultural buildings to drive urban regeneration. This is the Long Museum West Bond we started working on at the end of 2011. Across the river are the pavilion area of 2010 Shanghai Expo. The site used to be a wall for transporting coals. When we started this project, a two stories underground car park surrounding the coal uploading bridge was already built two years ago. However, this coal hopper uploading bridge was preserved. It is around 100 meter and five meter wide. What makes me interested is that even though the hopper was lost its function of transporting coals, we can still read from its structure to see the body of the trains and how the coal transported there. I think that using is making. The meaning of the structure is suddenly suspended as the function is removed. This somehow represents the destiny of an architecture in the future. If a city is willing to preserve this structure without the function, it means that architecture has to prove a value beyond its use, but it starts exactly from functional purpose. We have to design an art museum on such a site. Traditional art museum originate from palace and villas. And this layout is going from room to room has always been a standard pattern of, it came to realize that what paintings and artworks are attached to are walls, but not rooms. It's possible to have a more flexible layout. So we came up with a space with independent walls where people can roam around to see the exhibitions. These independent walls are built from the existing basement, which is designed as an 8.4 times it. 0.4 meters column grade to standard car parking. Actually, the walls are each made of two pieces of walls. They climb the old frame structure and grow upwards, expanding into individual, what we call it, vault umbrella structures. They grow up with one another till they covered all the exhibition space. The void in between the walls as the paint color shows it for mechanical equipment. Of course, there are many ways to combine the walls. Finally, we decided we decide on a layout with diverse spaces that are symmetrical rotational or diagonal. The fluidity of space is important and it is the simplicity of this very space, of this very structure, resulting from various intentions that build up an analogy with the existing co-hopper on the site. The co-hopper uploading bridge guides the way from the city towards the waterfront public space. This is the western facade. And this is the north facade. You can see the coal uploading bridge. The main entrance hall, hallway and the coal uploading bridge. This is the main exhibition hall. 
The left picture shows an activation called 1,199 persons, which was curated by Xu Zhen and Hans Ulrich Obrist. All the, pop, all the artworks here are related to human figures. It reminded me to Giovanni's Panini's painting, picture gallery with views of modern Rome. I guess the way the curator arranged these paintings was a metaphor or recall of European salon tradition. That's the history of art museum. This is Xu Zhen's solo exhibition in the space. And this is Shanghai artist Ding Yi and Beijing artist Zhang Wang. They both made artwork specially for this space. This is Oliver Eliasson's solo exhibition. This particular work in the hall is called the Open Pyramid. The museum was still under construction when Eliasson came to the visit in 2013. And he decided to do an exhibition there some afterwards. He reacted to this somehow Roman space with an Egyptian architecture. Uh, this is the exhibition called 15 Rooms, curated by Little Hans and designed by Herzog Cameron. This is the exhibition of uh, James Terrell. And this is Shanghai artist Yang, Yang Fudong turned the museum into his film set. Exhibition of uh, Tony Gomley and Louis Boudreau. This is uh, the other exhibition space. Uh, this is an uh, underground space. And this is the second floor space. And this is uh, from the first floor to the underground floor. And the underground floor exhibition space. These photos shows the activities of people inside and outside the building. It has become one of the most important art and cultural space of Shanghai. Uh, this, this project is the Shanghai Modern Art Museum at Eastbound. It is also along the Hump River. It has a museum and an additional walkway. It was also a coal wall, almost demolished completely. Under, under our suggestions, the client agreed to retain these ordinary industrial structures. By the time the roof and part of the walls have been removed already, it had to be pulled down because the existing structure could not meet the functional need for the new building. And it never came to, to the client that the enclosed hoppers could become exhibition spaces. We applied a huge roof truss on the top to hang the new structure below, which formed the cantilever additional surrounding space. The existing structure is in red color, surrounded by the suspended structures as increased exhibition space. The building has a brand new appearance, apart from the steel stairway on the left, we can barely see where the old building can be found. These suspended structures also add shared exterior space to the building. The platforms and corridors bring up a sense of publicity and landscape, which the former enclosed industrial buildings did not have. As far as the Shanghai Tower and another two high rises, what we usually call it a set of three, they were the highest high-rise in China at the time of their birth. 
whether the museum is open or not, people are able to walk by the building from one side to the other side. When lights are on, we can see the old structure in the building. Brand new architecture has an old coal hopper at its core, covering the entrance hall of the building. The contrast between inside and the outside is also unique to the architecture. Exhibitions can be held in between and even inside the co hoppers. This is the new stairs. To the north of the museum are cafes and art shops transformed from the original coal channels. It is also a public park. These are the old coal channels. We attached a new and light steel structure onto the old frame structure, both stressing the existence of the old and forming a new entity. You will see the new structure and the old structure. They're working together. The glass boxes are retail spaces. On the top of the roof is an elevated walkaway at the high line. Some photos about the environment and the retail space, the retail space and the old frame structure. It is not only a part of the museum, but rather a part of the city. This is also a renovation project on the east side of the Hump River. It is known as the 80,000 ton silos for the grain storage, which was the largest one in Asia. It is also called the Minshan Wall. This is a picture before renewal. In 2017, the building was decided to serve as the main pavilion of Shanghai urban spatial art season. With a total height of 48 meters high, the top and the bottom floors of the silos and all floors are of a service building were to be used for the exhibition. Thus, it has become the main issue to complete as entire visit circulation. It is also at the core of the design to open up the enclosed silos as a cultural space. But meanwhile, preserving the existing architectural figures and its spatial characters are the preconditions. Eventually, we attached an elevator covered with glass onto the building, both completing the circulation and building up the public city between the silos and the Hump River. Visitors can appreciate the view from different heights throughout the lifting process. We also designed an outdoor walkway loading to the second floor directly from the riverside. But unfortunately, this has not been realized yet. This slow walkaway can load visitors from the riverfront directly to the top of the building. The cantilevered glass escalator makes the warehouse vibrant again. This became the new spot to watch the riverside sunset. This is the exhibition hall on the ground floor designed by uh, this is uh, the, the a Prada show here, designed by OMA. One silo was opened as a spiral sloped space to enter the top of the floor, the, the floor hall. The renovation only took five months. It's quite quick. 
uh, in 2014, following the completion of the Law Museum Westbound, the government came to realize the influence of art on the urban development. With joint efforts from our office and the government, we gradually formed the Westbound Art and Design Village based on the Westbound Art Center. It used to be the repair repair garage of the Shanghai Aircraft Manufacturing Factory. This area is also where China's first airport was located. A huge repair warehouse was also almost pulled down because it was sitting on a newly planned road. Eventually, four span of the West Wide were removed. The government wanted to remove the warehouse mainly because they didn't know what to do with it. Removing the building and sell the land can be much easier things to do. Because of the law museum, the government saw the potential of art, so holding an art fair became the final choice for this space. This is an oil painting of the East facade of the warehouse made by the artist Zhou Tiehan, who is also the principal curator of the art fair. The renovated warehouse opened up part of its uh, elevations to the city. The interior space was mostly preserved as the art fair space. We add a partial first floor, a slope, and the wide stairs. The sunset can be seen inside the hall. Surrounding this area, the, the, the art center, there are a, a series of temporary studios for artists and architects, as well as some galleries. To, uh, to the atmosphere of the art zone, we took the chance and built a small studio here as well for ourselves. Since the building could only last for five years, it's a temporary, temporary building, we need to build it rather fast in, with a low budget. We built up walls of bricks directly from the car parking ground at the ground floor structure of the building, saving the money for the foundation. And we applied light steel structure on the first floor to meet the need for large workspace. Finally, we finished this house of uh, 450 square meters at the cost of only one year's rent for the same size space elsewhere in Shanghai. This is the detailed drawings. You can see the, the, the wall structure in the ground floor and the steel structure in the second floor, the first floor. The elevation of the building honestly reflects the relating structure forms, the brick and the, the, the steel structure facade. The courtyard. This is our meeting room in the first floor. This is the second floor. The, the working space. Yeah, the small office room. You can you may see the skylight and the tree outside. This is the small library. This is a tea house in also in the art village. It's belonged to a fashion design company. It is located in a 110 square meter courtyard with a tall, a tall tree. The tea house uses really thin steel structures with all columns and beams at about only six centimeters wide. In order to reduce the 
footprint of the tea house as much as possible. We turned the interior seats into part of the architectural structure and elevate elevations. The seats facing the garden are also built into the structural body. The structural body shows the intentions of support and function. They became components within, with multiple meanings. Architecture, is it architecture or furniture? It is also blurred due to the scale of the structure elements because the, it's also the same dimension with the, the, the furniture. It's just a six centimeters wide. Some detailed photos is the, the, the roof. Uh, I think the structure is both of architecture and the furniture here. In this way, a direct connection is created between our body and architectural structure because the body has more relationship with the furniture. This is the Riverside Passage just finished last year. It is also along the Huangpu River. The site used to be a gas factory wharf, also for coal transport, transporting. There was a, a 19 meter long and four meter high concrete wall and some wild trees nearby. The wall was built to prevent the coal from falling into the river. Some trees grow from within the gap between the wharf and the flood control wall. It gives a sense of wildness. There were actually two walls on the wharf. One of them had been broken down and left in the gap as the wharf was abandoned later. The place turned into ru ruins left behind by the city. We hope to transform the place into a new urban space with its current atmosphere throughout a modest design. We applied a single pitched roof onto the wall and clearly defined the space on both sides. One side is lower corridor related to a small scale garden space in the gap. The other side is the lift platform reacting to the large scale riverside. We named this place Bian Yuan in Chinese pronunciation as the English name Riverside Passage. In Chinese, it also means a place a little bit far away or a fringe walk away. This is the bird view photo. The ground of the wharf is polished into a skating rink. The new roof changed the whole of the, the wall and the place as well. But the characters and atmosphere of the original place are still, are still here. The water here may rise and fall once in a, in a day. Rainy days. This is the pavilion or a balcony and the corridor as well. And there's also a place where one can feel free to stay or passing by. It carries with the trace of urban infrastructures in the metropolis. It becomes a place of landscape. You will find the duration of time here. The garden in the gap. This is a view from above. The entering slope and the pavilion facing the river. The side facing the garden brings a strong architectural figure due to the single pitched roof. But in fact, it is just two part of 
exterior space divided by a wall. The scape of the wildness. It's a garden of ruins. It's also a scape of ruins. It's a place for wanderers. I would like to close with two projects outside Shanghai. This is the Taizhou Contemporary Art Museum. Taizhou is a small city in the south of Shanghai. Uh, it's about uh, three hours from Shanghai by high-speed train. It sits in the former green depot, which has been transformed into a commercial retail area. The developer kept a piece of land for a small art museum. To the south of the museum is a small plaza, and it is facing a mountain to the east. We designed staggered space for exhibitions and covered the space with pa parallel bolts. Here are several model photos. You may see the parallel wall structure and the uh, facade. The facade facing the plaza also applied walls with a similar form, just like the parallel vault ceiling. It seems like the interior is unfolded to the outside due to constant construction errors and in continuous building process, the facade of the building presents an unexpected texture. We managed to persuade the client to retain all the error marks on the facade before he tried to cover them up. This is beyond what we design can do. Something as an unsatisfying construction Perform, per, per, performance may also become a figure of beauty. This is a, a small, shows the small plaza in front of the museum. We may see the raw interior space, or we may see it a naked space. Before it became a, a museum, we re, re, recorded this naked space as a ruin. The upturning structure edge beam made the vault structure seems like it floating in the air. The mountain at far is involved into the building. Finally, the white walls turn it into an art museum. First floor facing to the, uh, the plaza and the staircase. Its interior space is the most impressive when it is deep. The museum keeps the door open even when there is no exhibition and people would go inside, look around and take photos. This is a photo I saw on social media by someone I don't know. And in the end, I specially choose a project in Wuhan, the Qingtai Art Museum. Due to the pandemic, Wuhan has become known to the world. The project is at a lake site in Wuhan, facing a small mountain opposite the lake. The site is in a rather natural environment within the city. We use a curved a rolling roof to adapt the architecture into the environment as a part of the landscape. This is the main site facing the, the city, facing the city roads. The, muse the museum is covered with a curved roof with a winding 
pass on the rooftop. We hope to create a special public space for the city of Wuhan with the roof and the art installation upon it. And below the roof are exhibition halls with different heights. This is the main hall of the museum. And this is the second floor. You, may, you can see the feeding, the ceilings with the raw concrete structure. This is a photo I, I just took on site last weekend when I went there. This is the, the, the interior space has been most formed. There will not be additional seedings and all equipments are carefully hidden under the floors and within the void of the concrete walls. The opening of the roof frame the natural landscape outside. This is the mountains opposite the, the lake, which is called the Maze, Maze Mountain. The roof itself will be a, a special landscape too. Even though Wuhan had the toughest time during the pandemic, the city has now come back to life. People are returning to their normal days and the museum construction continues. It will be finished in the end of the year. I'm standing at the top of the roof and the two puppies run reaching the top and look to the far. Through this video, I want to bring hope to people who are still bothered by the pandemic. This is the very first online lecture of the Riva plus Vitra talks, I think. It is both the result of the pandemic influence and also the beginning of a new possibility to communicate. I hope these things will all be fine in the near future and we can meet in the real space next time. Thanks for listening. That's all the, the lecture. Thank you, Yichun, uh, for a truly fascinating talk. Uh, Shanghai is um, is one of my favorite cities in the world, and I've missed going to Shanghai recently. Um, and you know, I also have had the privilege to visit the Long Museum of uh, Wuhan. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, we have had some questions from the audience. Uh, thank you all for submitting these. Yichun will try and get as many questions answered uh, as we can before the end of today's session. So Yichun, um, it's a person who lives in Shanghai who said, uh, I live in Shanghai and we have been in the uh, MAM, MAM and love it. Uh, Azalina, the, the and voice do, a little bit. Can you hear me, Eugene? Yes. Okay. So fluently. Can you speak again the questions? Uh, I am. The other museums that have been created open and do they house exhibition all the time or only some of the times? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's have to come uh, exhibition all the time. I think most of the time. Yeah, sometimes they will have some fashion shows and sometimes, but uh, every 
museum, they will have one or uh, two or three exhibitions. So one exhibition stopped and another one still continues. Um, and this person also said that they have cycled along the river and see the silos, but they didn't know if you can still go inside. So that was an interesting uh, part of it. Um, we then have a question from uh, Satwinda Samra from Sheffield University. Hello, Sat. Um, thank you for an amazing talk, he says. What role does freehand and sketching and model making play in your design process, Yuchun? Uh, yeah, I will uh, discuss the projects with my colleagues with the drawings and uh, uh, the model uh, model making is, is, is important for us to uh, to see the, 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 the uh, uh, image of the space. Yeah, but uh, uh, we more use the uh, some um, software, the, the 3D software, SketchUp and Rhino as well. Thank you for that. Uh, and we have another question come in uh, from Boji Hu. Uh, the question is, as the concrete constitute as consistent material used in all your art museum project, what's your reason of using concrete in these projects? Do you have other alternative options for them? Yes, the first uh, museum of uh, Law Museum we used the concrete because of it used to be an industrial site. So we try to use the concrete material to uh, fit the the, the, the industrial uh, place atmosphere. And I think the concrete is also a, a, a important exhibition service uh, because it can be, you know, the, the, the formal art museums always have uh, white, white walls. So the, the curator can arrange the exhibition freely. But we design as a concrete walls. It's, it will be a little difficult for the curators to arrange the, the exhibitions. But uh, some of the curators also told me that the, the concrete wall is uh, kind of uh, uh, examination of the, the artworks, yeah. Of course, some of our uh, art museum we use the the, the 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 white walls, white color walls. For example, the Taizhou uh, Contemporary Art Museum we use the we uh, use the uh, white colored uh, uh, exhibition wall, but we still keep the the concrete ceilings because we think the the structure is important for us. It's important for the space. Uh, the the white wall uh, somehow they just uh, reduce the, the power of the structure. Yeah. I, just to carry on from that theme of concrete. Um, I, I, I suppose, what, what do you think is the future use of concrete? And you know, what does it need to be considered in terms of sustainability? We all talk about sustainability currently in China. I know it's very much looking at this. Um, and you know, so, so what, what role the concrete plays uh, than just a static or conceptual function? How do you think it will play, or concrete will play its role in the future? Uh, of course, uh, for me, uh, the most important for the sustainable uh, thinking, I think the uh, last building is more sustainable. And uh, why we use the concrete material is just uh, not every building uh, it be uh, possible or it be uh, better use the uh, uh, concrete. Uh, it, it just because uh, a, a special site, we, we will think about to use the, the concrete material. Uh, in different 
uh, projects, we, we may use the different materials. Thank you. Uh, well, Victoria Chong has uh, sent a message saying that many thanks for the interesting talk. Do you have any advice for architecture students? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me, for me, traveling is more important because uh, when I was a student, the uh, uh, information of the uh, international architecture is quite few. So I, 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 I try to, to first uh, to uh, travel uh, in, the, in China and then uh, travel all over the world to see the different architectures and to view uh, the, the different atmosphere of different places everywhere. So to uh, travel and to um, when, up, when tra observe the environment is more important for the architecture. Yeah. Uh, learning. <laughs> I have, and I just wondered um, we talk about what, what do you think students can do currently to overcome that traveling restriction? Is it virtually connecting with others? Uh, yeah, we have now we have the internet, we have uh, uh, yeah, social media. We can use the phone to yeah let another one to see the different yeah maybe maybe have a a, a new way to communication or to to travel yeah but 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 all this is a visual virtual yeah we still need a, a real space yeah uh, a real a real a real space is always needed. Uh, from Yu Ting Jiang, who says, Dear Yu Chun, thanks for presenting us some of your amazing work. I think we all agree that it's been really amazing. What is the biggest challenge when ex executing? Sorry, what is the big challenge? Uh, when you that? ex, yeah, when you execute your design through the construction phase. Uh, negoti negotiate with the client, and the and the construction yeah. company. <laughs> and, and is that throughout the process or at the beginning? And how how would you? Advice. Yeah, yeah. It it will you know, all the process we, we need to negotiate. Well first we have talked with the client how the the, the, the ideas was the, the 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 design what the design shows and uh, uh, also we, we need to sometime we need to persuade the government, the, the urban planning bureau. Finally, we, we need to talk with the con a construction company if, when they can't do that. Yeah, we, we will need to talk, talk to them how to do that. Yeah, such, 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 such things. <laughs> so basically keep talking. Yes. Uh, a question from Emma Woodward. How is your design approach different to new built project as opposed for renovations? And do you find one to be more challenging or interesting than the other? Yeah, uh, the uh, renewable projects is more challenge because we have to have to gather all the conditions. Yeah, some some condition we don't know, but it's under the under the things outlookings. Yeah, the newly uh, projects is more uh, uh, simple. It's more easier than the 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 the, the uh, regeneration project. I think. Uh, now, 
uh, some, uh, Brian Simpson has asked a question about, uh, for him, the most poetic projects come from the resonance between new and existing structures. Do you enjoy working with existing structures? Now, this is building on to the previous question about new project. Do you enjoy working more with existing structures than actually purely new build? Yes. Uh, both condition, both I, 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 I like the I like them the same, but yeah. uh, the, the working with the existing things is a quite challenge for me. I think uh, it's just to give you more limited conditions. So you have to work under, under the, under the uh, resisting conditions. So it's uh, it's it's quite a challenge. So it's it it will let you feel quite exciting because it's quite difficult. So I have to working with them. Yeah, that's that's a little bit a little bit different from the this kind of two two kind of projects. It's yeah, the the the, the uh, renovation projects is more exciting. I mean, to us, yeah. Uh, do you think architects? And this has been asked quite frequently actually do you think architects have a duty to design in an environmentally friendly way of course that's why yeah that's why we called architects <laughs> <laughs> In what sense, Yu Chen, do you think? Because architects are, for, for me anyway, because I obviously work with many, many architects, although I'm not an architect myself. Um, and uh, do you think that duty is because architects are not just about designing, they are problem solvers, from my experience. And do you think that is one of the role of an architect in an environmental friendly way? Is that their, fun, you know, their duty as architects to find the solutions possibly for the future? Do you feel that is coming through, through the uh, current design that you are seeing? Yes, I think this is a part of, uh, it's a part of the work of the architects. We have to solve the problems but we have to work beyond the problems. We have to create new things to create the future. Yeah, that's more important, I think. But firstly, we have to solve the problems. Well, there's, hello, John. Uh, John is in Shuzhou, um, and I know he's at the university. Uh, and he says, thank you very much uh, from Shuzhou for sharing your inspirational work, uh, especially the blending of the existing building fabric with the new. Perhaps you could give us an insight to your next challenges. Yeah. The next challenge I think is technical. How the technical influence our life. How we facing the technical I mean, I mean the technique. I mean the 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 the, the new technical, uh, the, the 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 internet, the the uh, parametric design, the the the, the computer uh, uh, calculations, all 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 our new uh, condition is uh, different from the old time. So we have to. We have to work with them. We have to facing the the future, the, the problems by the the, the new technology. Uh, I think for architects, there are three or four things are more important. One is the the technique, the the technology, the life, 
and the language. Yeah, final is, I think, is the, the, the form. Thank you for that. Uh, now, someone sent in a question. To, uh, how do you learn from the old master architects? Could you please make some examples how they reflect in your works, perhaps? Sure. Yeah, I yeah every, I think every every architect uh, first from the, the the when he was a student he will study with the, the master plan the, the master pieces. Uh, every architect has their own uh, favorite architects favorite master yeah masterpieces. Uh, for me, I like I'm very like uh, the works of Louis Kahn. Yeah, and uh, Le Corbusier, yeah. But uh, 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 more and more uh, recently, I try to understand, to uh, visit some the, the the Asian Asian architecture, such as in China we have the uh, Fo Guang Temple uh, in a uh, Tang Dynasty. Uh, for example, uh, I visit the, the, the an a bay called uh, Tolonet in 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 south of Europe. Yeah, uh, 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 Dong Shiji. Medieval. 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 Uh, 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 cloisters. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, uh, some Asian pro architects uh, architecture can uh, give me more uh, inspiration. For example, such as some uh, Roma uh, Roma uh, uh, ruins, the the, the the Villa Hadron, yeah, yeah, and so on. Thank you. Now, Ichu, uh, I'm going to indulge myself by asking a question on the Long Museum. It is one of my favourite buildings. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Beautiful work. Uh, and the museum <laughs> seems to be able to host many different kind of work, artwork. When you, when you were designing that interior of the Long Museum, did the curators or the museum share with you some of the artists uh, and works that would be exhibited there? Did you design any of the interiors with any art piece in mind? Yeah, of course. Uh, yes, uh, before I designed the, the Law Museum, I have uh, several projects uh, working with artists, the Chinese uh, contemporary artists, for example, Zhang Wang and uh, Yue Mingjun. And I know how the contemporary art works, uh, works, exhibition works. Uh, uh, for me, uh, the most important, I, I try to uh, create uh, uh, a modern space, a, 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 a fluid is a space to to arrange the the, the exhibition in a wandering way, and uh, uh, when 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 we design the exhibition, we we always uh, drawing some renderings. We are, yeah in one uh, renderings we just use the 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 work of uh, Louis Baudrillard, his uh, spider. Yeah, his mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Sure. So, so I just I, I quite imagine some kind of uh, contemporary art works exhibition there, and uh, when I designed a museum, the we talked with the the, the client with the museum, and uh, the first uh, opening exhibition, the curator has a little bit worry about the concrete, the concrete wall. He told me. They always use the uh, in, uh, arrange the uh, curator exhibition in a white cube exhibition space. But you give me a uh, such kind of shaped uh, uh, concrete uh, concrete wall space. Uh, can you just paint it with a white color? Because in different in different exhibition, we might to color it with blue or pink, 
when we design different topic, different title of the, the exhibition. But when the building finished, the, his, he saw the, the surface of the, the concrete. He just told me, Yichuan, don't, don't paint in any colors, just that the concrete is okay, it's quite impressive. Yeah, so we, try, we, we may try to use a kind of way to fit your art, fit your exhibition space. So, and, and actually uh, after that, every exhibition, every art exhibition in this space is unique because every artist and curator they just try to find a way to fit with the architectural space. So every, every exhibition was just unique. That's fantastic. Thank you. I'm very much looking forward to visiting the Long Museum when I'm allowed back to travel very soon. Um, we're nearly at the end. I've got probably one question for you before we wrap things up. Uh, and I think this is a wonderful question here. Hi, uh, this is called Blanca Grobe. I'm sorry, but I'm not pronouncing this name. Blanca Grobelna. Hi, thank you for great speech. Beautiful and incredible architecture eyes. Would the use of concrete building be an additional advantage of combining uh, more with the green area, uh, use planting for better environment? Yes, you will see the, uh, the roof of the Law Museum. It, it's just a, a flat roof, but we just use uh, uh, the grass uh, on the top of the roof. And also the, the last uh, project, Qingtai Museum, we also used the, the, the plants uh, covered the, the, the curved surface, but not all the, the surface, just the part of the surface. We just want to create, uh, create a, a, a landscape. The landscape, we just uh, include the, 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 the plants and also the, the rocks or some kind of uh, hardly <laughs> landscape, hard landscape, yeah, not all, not all the soft, soft landscape. Thank you. I knew that was going to be my last question, but I'm going to end with one last question, because uh, I think this is very apt. It's from uh, Gina Jiang. Thank you, Liu, for such a wonderful lecture. I found a lot of your work inspirational. Like you did the uh, like your work uh, at Louis Kahn. My question is, what do you enjoy the most working as an architect? The site. <laughs> when, yeah, you 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 can see your design yeah, day by day, and the from a very small became the became true. Yeah, that's the. What what you feel? Yeah, <laughs> what you feel that the the accomplishment, and uh, yeah, uh, every building when the. Yeah, when the construction frame just fall down and the 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 real space came, came into your eyes, at that moment is the most exciting moment of me, for me. Yeah. Well, thank you. I think that's, that's a really good way to end today. It's, we've got loads more questions, but certainly we have come to the end of today's event. A huge thank you to Yi Jun and his team for sharing some of his wonderful work. Clearly everyone's appreciated this and loving it um, with us. It's been truly fascinating. So share, share, Yi Jun. Um, <laughs> yeah, and thank you again to Vitra to for their support, Chloe of uh, RIBA Public Programs for organising this today, and the wonderful tech team in the background. Uh, well, I hope what is you all have had and enjoy uh, you've enjoyed the talk today as much as I have. And until next time, take good care of yourselves and stay safe. Thank you again, Liu, and thank you everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Take care.